If I were to ask you about time measurement, I'm going to be asking Annette over there, and she's going to say minutes and eventually seconds. If I were to ask, for instance, Sorry about time management, she's going to, th to think about the school agenda, which is going to be measured by semesters, eventually years. We have also some techie guys here, like John, Lee, myself, and sometimes we measure that in nanoseconds. Forget about that. What I'm going to speak about is something that you're not expecting, which is many, many years ago. The first time measurement is going to be the 10,000 years ago. Yes, Matt, I may see your face. Second is going to be 100,000 years ago. And don't be surprised, the next measurement is going to be one million years ago. And then you're going to say, it's crazy. He has only five minutes to finish this speech. <laughs> Thank you for your speech, because that's going to be the end of mine, which is going to be joy. It's going to be happiness. Fellow Toastmasters, most welcome guests. A million years ago, we had Mr. Omo Havilis. He is my first guest. This guy was, he had longer arms because he was able to climb the trees and he has a beautiful scenery in the savannas of Africa. It's like seeing Discovery Channel or National Geographic Channel but in 3D and live. Can you imagine that? It's just amazing. And then what he was seeing is the fight between a predator and a prey. The predator was about half a ton, saber tiger. And maybe you're familiar with that because his teeth were 12 inch long. And he was fighting against the mammoth. That was a ton beast. That kind of fight immediately was uh, amazing. But the predator, the only thing they, they need to do was to find how to feed themselves. What's the problem here? Once the predator kills the beast, and once it finishes eating what they need for today, or maybe for a couple of days, they leave the remaining order for the rest of the species. So Mr. Homo habilis comes down the tree and then starts feeding himself. This is like an ugly scenario for the current uh, table manners that we have. That means that rather than being a hunter, he was a scavenger. That was a new word for me because in Spanish we don't have that expression. Scavenger is the one that goes behind the remains, exploring the carcasses. But why this guy was called Homo habilis, or handyman? That was really a joke, because he wasn't a handyman like the one we have in our homes, the one that puts the electricity and the power, the air conditioning. No. He was able to get two stones and hit them, and he was able to get a sharp edge that was the only discovery in one million years. End of my story for the first million. <laughs> Why you laughing? I, I still have more, many more years to tell you. <laughs> Phase two, Mr. Homo erectus. Sorry for the expression, maybe you get confused about this. Is the guy that was able to walk upright. And that's the amazing next step in our event development, which is the person that was able to walk around, but also his body was changing, let's say adapting to the new situation. His lungs were bigger, the larynx became lower, their jaw and the teeth were smaller compared to the previous generation, which is the ones that were eating uh, plants, but they were eating, thank you, they were eating meat. The meat was providing also high calorie food at the same time his brain was bigger and allowed them to continue the evolution. Why is important this guy in these stages? Because he was able to produce two first products. Number one, can you imagine that? The evolution of the stone axe, now we have two-sided axe. Wonderful, it took a million years to get the second edge, but it was sharper. And also with this axe, they were able to use sticks, and the sticks with sharp edge, they, were able, they became the predator 
rather than becoming the prey, they were able to defend themselves and also to attack all the beasts uh, in, in, the black, in, in the plains of Africa. But wait a minute, this was a walking person. So they discovered also uh, Asia and Europe. That's a confusing time in the history because there are many theories about how they were able to move from Africa to Europe and Asia. But also, they were able to discover the second product that I will call not the pen, but the pin, which is something like this. What happened with the pin? Since they were able to handle all the skins from the animals, they put a cover on them. Remember, they were naked. So, once they have the skin on top of them, um, with the pin, walking upright, they were able to conquer the glaciers, the places where they weren't able to go before because it was too cold. Now they have control of this cold. Now my third guest, I have a picture of him here, my most welcome guest, Mr. Homo sapiens. As you may see, it looks very similar to us, but because of the magic of uh, YouTube or uh, Facebook, I was able to find his wife as well. <laughs> this is his wife. <laughs> Mr. Homo sapiens had the smart thing, which is three different intelligences. Intelligence number one is the environmental, which is the same that animals somehow have, which is this is my surrounds, and this is the way I'm going to be able to survive around here. Number two, is going to be the technical capacity or technical intelligence, which is the one we've been talking about, how to continue developing more products. And the third, I would say the most important one, is going to be the social intelligence, the one that we know now, the reason for being here, and the reason for having families. Amigos, fellas, Toastmasters, this is not the end of my speech. My desire is to reincarnate in a monkey. <laughs> Why that? Because he's always happy. He lives in the present time. He doesn't care about the past. He doesn't care about the future. And also, he's enjoying the life forever. Thank you very much.